We begin with the Obama administration's latest attempt to explain the misleading information uh, given out in the days after the September 11th attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya. Four Americans, including the U.S. ambassador to Libya, died in what we now know was a terrorist attack. But that isn't what the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Susan Rice, said when she went on national television five days after the attack. Today, Rice is up on Capitol Hill as she's explaining what happened, and some big-name Republicans clearly are not very happy with her answers. Our senior congressional correspondent, Dana Bash, is following what's become a pretty long day, a tiring day, for the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. What's the latest, Dana? Well, you know, Wolf, the three Republican senators who had vowed to block Susan Rice's uh, from being Secretary of State if the president nominates her had really softened their rhetoric in recent days. I'm told the reason for that was because it was a courtesy in order for them to wait until they have a face-to-face -face meeting with her, which they had today. But after that meeting, their criticism was harsher than ever. The way these grim-faced GOP senators tell it, Susan Rice's attempt to calm their criticism backfired. We are significantly troubled by many of the answers that we got and some that we didn't get. And I'm more disturbed now than I was before. That Rice requested to meet with her chief Republican critics in order to explain why, five days after the September Benghazi attack that killed four Americans, she went on Sunday talk shows suggesting it was sparked by a spontaneous protest. The information given to the American people was wrong. In fact, Ambassador Rice said today, absolutely, it was wrong. Accompanied by acting CIA Director Michael Morrell, Rice explained she was using these unclassified talking points, which were stripped of references to al-Qaeda, still classified by the intelligence community. So Rice used the word extremist. Uh, extremist elements. Uh, came uh, to the consulate uh, as this was unfolding. A source inside the meeting tells CNN Rice admitted to GOP senators she was aware of classified information suggesting al-Qaeda was behind the attack. And yet, GOP senators point out she still said this publicly. We have decimated al-Qaeda. CNN is also told Rice tried to clarify to GOP senators that what she meant was al-Qaeda's core leadership had been decimated. But GOP senators argue it's proof Rice was putting pre-election spin before national security. It to give the scenario uh, as presented by Ambassador Rice and President Obama three weeks before an election. <laughs> Rice did not answer our question. She did release a statement admitting her talking points, quote, were incorrect in a key respect. There was no protest or demonstration in Benghazi. While we certainly wish we had had perfect information just days after the terrorist attack, as is often the case, the intelligence assessment has evolved. We stress that neither I nor anyone else in the administration intended to mislead the American people at any stage in this process. And the White House had this to say. The focus on, some might say obsession on, comments made on Sunday shows uh, seems uh, to me and to many to be misplaced. GOP senators also complained Rice neglected to ask key questions before telling the public what turned out to be wrong information. That's troubling to me as well, uh, why she wouldn't have asked, I'm the person that doesn't know anything about this, I'm going on every single show. Now, Rice's Democratic supporters argue the Republican senators are the ones who are politicizing the Benghazi attack by continuing to go after Susan Rice. In fact, uh, the Homeland Security Chairman Joe Lieberman also met with Susan Rice this afternoon, Wolf, uh, and he came out and told reporters he's satisfied with their answers. He sees nothing to disqualify her as Secretary of State if the president decides to nominate her. Unfortunately for Susan Rice, as you know, Joe Lieberman won't get a vote because he is retiring at the end of the year. He won't be in the next Senate uh, in the slame duck sentence. It's not going to do that if, and it's still a big if, if the president goes ahead with this nomination. Do we have a clear answer yet, Dana, why the uh, White House decided to put Ambassador Rice out on that specific Sunday, five days after that September 11th attack on the consulate in Benghazi? Why did they decide to select her to make the administration's case? 
Do we have a clear answer? No, but we have some suggestions uh, from Democratic sources I've been talking to. And the biggest, I'm told, actually came up in this meeting today with the Republican senators, which is why wasn't Hillary Clinton, uh, who, of course, is the Secretary of State now, why wasn't she out there? The answer was that she wasn't feeling well. She was very upset about the fact that uh, one of her ambassadors was killed in the, in the line of duty. And that's the main reason why she didn't go out and that to Susan Rice was kind of uh, the most logical choice to do that. The other argument that I'm told by Democratic sources is that she wasn't just talking about uh, Benghazi, but she was also talking about the protests that really were happening across the Middle East because of that video in Cairo and elsewhere. And usually they do put the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. out before the big United Nations General Assembly meetings, which were about exactly. to begin. Great point. Uh, so that's probably one of the reasons they selected her as well. That's at least what I've been told by uh, insiders. Uh, Dana, thanks very much. All right, let's get right to our strategy session. Joining us now, the Democratic strategist James Carville and the Republican strategist Mary Matlin. They're both CNN contributors. Guys, thanks very much for coming in. As you know, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Susan Rice, she met with uh, three of her toughest critics, Republican critics up on Capitol Hill today. Listen to w what Senators McCain, Graham, and Ayotte said after the meeting. We are significantly troubled by many of the answers that we got and some that we didn't get. I want to say that I'm more troubled today uh, knowing, having met with the acting director of the CIA and Ambassador Rice. Bottom line, I'm more disturbed now. More disturbed now, more troubled now. Uh, Mary, are they giving the U.S. ambassador a fair shot? Because there's all the indications we're getting. The president maybe wants to name her the next secretary of state. Well, whether she was misleading purposefully or unwittingly, we come to the same end. There's never been an incompetence of that magnitude at that level. There was open source intelligence. Then, And I don't know anybody, neither do you, Wolf, in all the administrations I've worked in or you've covered, where you get talking points handed to you and you don't ask questions. Even the presidential daily brief, the PDB, is intended to be asked about, not to be read, to be read deeply into and ask questions. I can't imagine any U.N. ambassador, any secretary of state, just taking prima facie that kind of information that was belied in real time by the Libyans on the ground, by our own people on the ground, by a real-time drone aerial picture of it, would go out a week later and say that. If it's, she's not misleading, then she's incompetent. What about that, James? Well... You know, we got a report by Ambassador Pickering that's going to come out in January. You know, if the president does appoint her, which frankly now I hope that he does, uh, she will testify openly. They will be able to ask her about these things, and she will answer it, and the public will be there and see the whole thing. Uh, there's been no effort at any cover-up. They've already launched an investigation. They've sent the director of Central Intelligence to testify, the, the, the director of overall uh, intelligence to, to testify so uh, they'll have a chance to question uh, ambassador rice presumably going to be secretary of state nominee rice and open committee hearing and she can give her answers and that's the way the system should work and they'll have the benefit of ambassador pickens report which was audited by the administration i'm sure that the secretary of state will be testifying at, at some point in this too or, or you know be heard from so it, it we'll, we'll see where it goes I, I agree with tom ricks uh, who was on our the competitor network fox news thought, said that he thought the whole thing was overblown uh, obviously, they're going to find some mistakes were made in, any, in anything they do. I think the public has a pretty good grip on this. But we'll see when, uh, when the Secretary of State does it, if that's what she has testifies, and they have a chance to question her and open as opposed to behind closed you, doors. Do you think, Mary, there's anything she can do to win over these uh, skeptical Republicans? I honestly do not believe this is about Susan Rice. I believe she's a smart person. She's a Rhodes Scholar. I understand all of that. But there is either a horrific intelligence breakdown, something broke down that where this administration, through the NDI chairman, has now said he took out the, the real facts about what was going on on the ground. There's something wrong when this administration allows their U.N. ambassador, who's read in at that level, to go out and mislead the American people on a terrorist attack. There's some that it's not about Susan Rice. She's a distraction here. But what Senators McCain Ayotte and, and Graham are talking about is we live in a dangerous world and we have to have a better answer than talking points given to her like she's some kind of flack. 
these polls that we have, uh, James, these latest CNN ORC polls, ha how has the Obama administration handled the Benghazi attack? 40% say they're satisfied, 54% dissatisfied. Did the Obama administration try to intentionally mislead public, the public on the Benghazi attack? 40% say yes, 54% say no. Uh, the administration's got some work to do, James. I mean, they have something to do, and I look, they may have made some mistakes here. Again, we have the report coming out by, that they audit by Ambassador Pickering, who's probably one of the most respected people in the last 30 years in the State Department. They testified, uh, we're going to know in January what happened. Are we going to find out that somebody made some mistakes? I would I'd be shocked if we didn't. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, I mean, again, this whole thing is there's probably some mistakes made here. I, I think the, the entire thing is... And I think the public has a pretty good grip on it, that they've made some mistakes and, you know, they weren't intentionally misleading people. But we're going to have real answers. And by the way, if Secretary Rice is, a, uh, I mean, Ambassador Rice is appointed to be Secretary of State, they can get more answers. They, they're the Congress. They have subpoena power in the House. They can do all of these things. And, and there's been no evidence of any cover-up or anything. So we'll get all the facts and the public will be able to discern what it is. I, I, again, I go back to what Tom Rick said, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist that he thinks this whole thing is overblown. Of course, the people made some mistakes, and we'll find out what they are and work an assessment and go on from there. We'll see if the president goes ahead and nominates her to succeed Hillary Clinton as the Secretary of State. Then we'll watch the fight up on Capitol Hill. Guys, thanks very much.